So hello everyone again in this particular um, video slide we will be focusing on examining the database implementation stage. Um, so if we review the database development process that we looked at, uh, we've talked about requirements gathering, analysis, and we really worked um, in the logical design stage when we were modeling our database and talking about normalization. Um, and then we kind of move into our implementation stage when we have a final model that we can say this is our model that we have really reviewed and we have decided and finalized our entities, attributes, primary keys, foreign key placement and relationships. We can say that we are ready to move into the implementation stage. So pretty much what happens is we are realizing the design. Uh, we are creating our tables, attributes and then um, the foreign key, primary keys, and then finally we can populate our database with data in it into the different tables. Um, so from our ER model to the final database, again to recap, the ER model is more, mostly a framework and it gives us the blueprint for us to implement the database um, structure in the database management system. So we pretty much create a table for each entity. Um, for each table, we identify the attributes. This is again the process that's happening in the logical design stage. Um, and that attributes goes back to what do you want to keep track of about a particular entity? That's really what helps us to determine the attributes. We finalize our data types of the attributes and we decide which attributes become the primary key. Um, so in this process, we can also see normalization as kind of happening hand in hand as well. Um, we establish relationships between the entity. Uh, we're thinking about maximum cardinality, minimum cardinality. Is our relationship strong, weak, ID or non-ID dependent weak entity and also the foreign key placement. So these steps are really what we are under um, going through in our logical design stage. And again, like I've said, we can go through many different iterations of our model uh, depending upon changes business rules, like different people reviewing it. So it takes a, 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 a good amount of review and looking at before we kind of come and say that, okay, we are now ready and this is our final model um, that we want to implement. So I just wanted to do a quick review of our foreign key placements. Uh, we have actually talked about this in our modeling stage, but again, uh, just a quick review. Uh, we have our one-to-one, one-to-many, and many-to-many -many maximum cardinalities. And the foreign key placement really depends upon our one to, our maximum cardinality. If we have a one-to-one, -one, we can place the foreign key in either one of the two entities. If we have a many, remember, we are always going to place our foreign key in the many side of the entity. And again, if we have a many to many, we need to create a new associative entity. Um, so again, these are some examples that we have looked at. We've looked at company and board, and we've decided that because this is a one-to-one, -one, it really doesn't matter. It can be either in board or company. And in this particular example, we place our foreign key in the board entity, and we can see company ID right here. So I wanted to show this so that we kind of are clear with expressing entities in relational form um, because this is your ER model or the ER diagram. But oftentimes we also write our entities in relational form. And as you can see, this is how we represent it. We have our table name, we underline the primary key and list all the attributes. And in board, we can quickly look at this and say that the board entity has the foreign key because we have company ID and it's also in italic. So um, this is how we denote our entities in relational form. Um, in a one-to-many relation, we know that the many side is what's going to get the foreign key. So in this case, employee is the many side and department ID is placed as a foreign key here. And when we are representing this in relational form, uh, we want to make sure that we um, represent our um, foreign key in italics and our primary keys are underlined so we can represent department the department ID being the primary key and employee with employee ID being the primary key of the employee entity with department ID as a foreign key there. So this is how we represent it in relational form. And finally, uh, when we do have a many to many, 
Uh, we have understood that we need to create an associative entity here. So when we are looking at student and course, uh, we end up creating enrollment, which becomes a many to many um, to satisfy the many to many relation between student and course. And we take each primary keys from the parent and place it together as a combined primary key. And each of these are also foreign keys in your new associative entity. And in this case, we have two other attributes that we also want to keep track of, which is term and grade. So let's look at how we represent this in relational form. So when it comes to representing in relational form, we have student course and our new associative table called enrollment. And as you can see here, um, student has student ID as the primary key. Course has course ID as the primary key. Enrollment has student ID and course ID together as the primary key. And each of this are foreign keys. So that's why it is also in italics, as you can see here. So this is how our relational form would be represented. Um, so coming back into implementing, so once we have a final model that we have ready, we can um, say that we are good to implement the database in MySQL. You can follow a number of different steps to implement it. Um, so the first approach would be we could decide to purely code everything. So we look at our ER model. Um, and then we write the data definition language statements to create the table attributes, primary key and foreign keys where they are applicable. And then we enter the data into the table using our insert statement that we have learned in SQL. So that is one of the approach that we can take. The second approach is to forward engineer our ER model in Workbench because MySQL Workbench is integrated with the server. So we can go through a step to forward engineer our ER model so that um, it automatically creates the schema for us. And we look at this example of that. Or we could also approach it using a graphical user interface. And this is something we completed in one of our early MySQL labs that we did when we installed MySQL. We went and created a schema, we created tables, and we added attributes to it and we populated. So we could look at our ER model essentially and use our graphical interface as well to create our table. So there are mainly three approaches that we can take as we are going to implement our database in MySQL. So if we're going with the first approach to code in SQL, I just wanted to review some things here. So again, I just, I'm bringing here the code example of the data definition language for the QAC table that you kind of worked on in your SQL exam. And I'm just giving an example of the table. You can always go back and open the script and it should show you all the data definition language statements here. So as you can see here, uh, we have our create table and then we have our open um, bracket and then we have all the different attributes with the data types defined. The syntax of this specifically is also in our uh, slides that we have covered in SQL and you can also find it in SQL W3 score resource as well. And as you can um, see here, we define our constraints for the primary key and foreign key. And we do have like for a foreign key, we have our references keyword and we refer the table with the particular field on update, no action on delete, no action. These are keywords that we use to say if you're updating one field in one table, do you want it to automatically update or not? That's pretty much what we're defining here as we are writing our SQL statement. So if we decide to go ahead and write the scripts for it, couple of things to keep in mind is that if the table has a foreign key, we need to ensure that we are creating the statements for the table that the foreign key is um, referring to first. So that's very important to do that. So let's take a minute to review the script that we um, used for creating our QAC schema. So this is the QAC create table schema that you all run again to refresh you. This is the script that you ran for your um, quiz. The I mean, sorry, not the quiz, the exam too that you did for writing your SQL statements where you had the customer, employee and sale table. So I want to point out that you have your create schema here, which is going to create the QAC schema. And then we want to specify that we are using the QAC schema. And then we have, we start to write our create statements to create our table. We define the different attributes, the data types. Uh, we can define whether they are null or not null. 
and then we have our primary key constraint to define that customer ID here is going to be our primary key. And we repeat the same step for the next table that we want to create and the next. But I want to point out here that customer and employee needs to be created first before you create your sale table. And the reason is because the sale table has foreign key of customer ID and employee ID that is referencing the customer and employee table. So if you try to run this statement before you create your customer and employee table, you will get an error because you don't have customer or employee defined. So that is the one thing to keep in mind as you are going to write, if you decide to write scripts to create your tables, you want to make sure that you're first running the scripts or creating the tables um, before uh, other tables that reference that have foreign keys that reference this table is used. So that is one important step to keep in mind. And also, once you have created your table structures, you can always come and start writing your insert statements. As you can see here, insert into customer, you can list all your field names and values. But if you know that all the values are going to get um, populated with, you can use the other version of your insert, insert statement. So again, you would write your insert statement for each of the tables that you want to populate your data with. So this would be the one approach that you want to follow if you are going to decide to write scripts to populate um, your database structure and to insert it with data.